Notes from Hell by Nikolay Yordanov and Valia Cherveniashka Narrated by Nano Nagel Introduction Then he slapped me. He yelled something in Arabic, and they all immediately surrounded me. They dragged me to the corridor. The ropes tightened around my wrists. They tied them around my ankles, too, and hung me upside down. Well, now you're going to tell us everything, my tormentor growled. He pulled out a thick cable wrapped in black insulation and swiped it at me. The first blow cut through my heels with a pain I had never imagined. But it was nothing compared to what I was going to taste. This was just the beginning of what was to become the longest night of my life. My name is Valia. Maybe you have heard about me. I was born in the small and poor town of Vratza in Bulgaria. I am a nurse by profession. I am fifty-six years old. I spent eight years behind the bars of several Libyan prisons, accused of mass murder. I have been sentenced to death three times. Coarse voices have cursed me. Unknown people's hands have assaulted my body. Hundreds of throats have yelled my name. Thousands of hearts have passionately bade for my death. And millions of people from countries all over the world have seen my face. I often think about the past. I am a woman who has come back from the darkest place. The notes from hell are written through the scars on my body, engraved as the nightmares in my mind and the eternal fear in my eyes. I am tormented by the fact that I was sent to prison only on account of fate and due to the criminal negligence of people I do not know. Despite everything you may have read about me in newspapers or seen on television, I wasn't the villain. I was the victim. Maybe you have heard my story. Maybe you have read the facts. Let me tell you, you have no idea what it is like to walk in my shoes. I will tell you everything. This is the story of the most dreadful eight years of my life. I never thought I would experience something worth telling in a book. Honesty, I would prefer that nobody knew about me. I would prefer an ordinary life of small hardships and small joys. My experiences have transformed me into a macabre sort of celebrity. Today, there are few doors closed to me. I know many people in many powerful places, and few are indifferent to my story and me. If only I could forget, but I can't. So, I feel compelled to tell my story. I cannot erase these memories, and I cannot walk away from them, but I will try. I know that only by setting them free will I free myself. Chapter 1 Arrival in Libya I first saw the country of Libya on the 4th of December 1984. I lived in communist Bulgaria then, and any escape, even to a totalitarian country such as Libya, was seen as a great opportunity. And when I had the chance to go there, I couldn't miss it. I left first, and several months later Emile, my husband, came to join me. I went there to expand my horizons and to gain work experience. I became a nurse by chance. I had applied for a course at the Sports Institute in Sofia, but neither my friend nor I were accepted. She suggested that we enroll somewhere else study with gusto, and then reapply the following year. That's how I came to study nursing. Indeed, the next year she started studying at the Sports Institute, but I continued to study to become a nurse. I liked it, and I grew to love my profession. I became a pediatric nurse because I first started work in a pediatric department, and I relished the feeling that I was helping children. I love kids, and I paid a huge price for that love. In Bulgaria, you don't earn much as a nurse, so when the opportunity to go to Libya and earn good money was presented to me, 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?